Creating a video game as a solo indie developer in 2025 presents both exciting opportunities and significant challenges. Although some may think that the gold rush is over when it comes to making indie games, in this video I would like to highlight some of the reasons why I believe 2025 may be the best year for you to start making your dream game. In recent years, the indie game scene has flourished with titles like Celeste, Cuphead, Hades and Hollow Knight achieving critical acclaim and commercial successes. And last year, a small indie game, Balatro, that was programmed in the Lua programming language using the Love Game Framework, was nominated for Game of the Year and was a critical and commercial success, with over 97,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. These games have demonstrated that small teams or even solo developers can create impactful experiences that resonate with players. There's a really good article on Mainleaf.com. I will leave a link to it in the description. In this article, they only mention Unreal and Unity, but I think that Godot is fast becoming a top contender in the indie game space. If you take into consideration Buckshot Roulette, this indie tabletop horror game was initially released on itch.io back in December 2023 and launched on Steam in April 2024. It gained significant popularity, selling over 1 million copies within the first two weeks of its Steam release and surpassing 4 million copies sold by December 2024. With the release of Godot 4.4 on the horizon, adding more features and quality of life improvements, I think that it's well worth your time checking out Godot if you're a beginner or have not made up your mind on a game engine yet. This video is primarily not about Godot, and I know that choosing a game engine as a beginner is a hot topic, so let me know what you think in the comments. Is Godot a great place to start for a beginner, or are beginners better off with Unity, Unreal, or somewhere else? While formal education in game development can provide a solid foundation for making games, considering the discipline needed to complete a degree, many successful indie game developers are self-taught. There are numerous online resources, tutorials, and courses available to help you learn the necessary skills. All that you have to do is practice what you learn and learn from your mistakes. But as we all know, that is much easier said than done. As a solo developer, you're responsible for various aspects of game creation, including programming, art, music, and marketing. And balancing these roles can be overwhelming. But with the rise in popularity of FORCE, free and open source software, it's becoming increasingly easier to jump into game development. Art programs like Krita and Aceprite, music and sound creation programs like LMMS and LabTube, and the various amazing game dev communities online and right here on YouTube, all make getting into game dev easier than ever. Now, securing financial resources remains a significant hurdle because traditional funding avenues are competitive and the saturated market doesn't help the situation. It makes it challenging to attract attention to your game. Today, the gaming industry is extremely crowded, making it difficult for new titles to stand out. Gaining visibility among a huge number of releases requires strategic marketing and a unique game concept. Luckily, there are places like Indie Fund or Game Dev Fund that may be able to help. Now, I'm not sponsored by these institutions, and I have not used their services, nor do I recommend them specifically. I just came across these sites while doing research for making this video. So, this is not financial advice by any means, but I think that it's worth taking a look. One thing that did catch my eye with Indie Fund is, if the game did not generate enough revenue to repay the investment within two years of release, the agreement expires and you no longer owe Indie Fund anything. Another cool funding opportunity is with Inner Slot, the creators of Among Us who launched Outer Slot, a funding initiative designed to help smaller studios navigate the challenging aspects of publishing. Now mind you, they did say that they don't want to publish your game, they want to fund your game and offer advice that will help you create fun games. If you're thinking of getting into game development, while all these things are important, I would advise to just focus on improving your craft and skill. Join Game Jams and learn how to finish a game first. I would love to hear what you think in the comments. 
Have you ever used any of these services or similar ones? Do you even qualify for them in your country? I would love to hear about your experiences. And for those of you that are interested, I would leave links to these sites in the description. I know it's been said at least a million times, and it's quite the controversial topic. But start small. Begin with manageable projects to build your skills and portfolio. Participating in game jams on itch.io can provide valuable experience and foster creativity. I try to do a game jam at least once a month to improve my skill. It's a great way to try out a new game idea. For those of you that are new to the concept, a game jam is an event that encourages you to make a game within a fixed time period following a specific theme. I usually do a weekend jam. It's a great place to start. Once you're comfortable with those, you could try a longer jam, like a two-week jam, or even a one-month jam, like the Metroidvania Month Game Jam. Use accessible game development platforms like Godot, Unity, or Unreal, which offer extensive resources and communities for support. Each offer tools that are better suited for different types of games. While it's possible to make any type of game in all of these game engines, I think that Godot is great for 2D games, Unity is great for mobile, and Unreal for large 3D experiences. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Engage with online forums like Discord, social media groups, and local meetups if possible to connect with other developers. These communities can offer feedback, collaboration opportunities, and moral support. This may be really difficult to do at first, and I still struggle with this, but you need to identify what makes your game stand out. Whether it's a unique art style, innovative mechanics, or a compelling story, highlighting these aspects can attract players' attention. Develop a marketing strategy from the outset. Building an audience during development through devlogs, social media updates can create anticipation for your game's release. At first, you may not see the need for marketing because you may not have a commercial game, but I think that it could be the thing that sets you up for success. A good place to do this is itch.io. A lot of game devs seem to think that itch is a dumpster for stupid games, but I disagree. I think that if it's managed well, your game that starts on itch can soar to greatness, just like Buckshot Roulette. Another great example is Tethergeist that started off as a game jam entry to the GMTK Game Jam 2021. O and company have been working on that game since then, and it has come a long way since. He even has his Steam page up already, and it says coming soon on there. So it can be done. It's not easy, but it can be done. I believe that it's a great idea to start building a following for your games as early as you can. I could be wrong about this, but let me know what you think in the comments. Have you started building a following for your games? Or are you going to spin the roulette wheel and hope for the best? Building a commercial game requires a dramatic shift in mindset. From the hobbyist project, it's essential to approach development with a business perspective. Considering aspects like target audience, monetization strategies, and long-term support. For me, I'm almost at the point where I want to take this step but there's still a lot for me to learn. Making your first commercial game does not mean you have to spend three years on your game, but you could consider doing a six month project. It may be that you finish a little early or you may have to roll over a bit, but the important thing is what you learn from the experience. And so what if it doesn't rake in heaps of cash? Or even if it fails, at least you would have gotten valuable experience and you really can't put a price on that. CodeMonkey has a really great video on that topic. CodeMonkey is a Unity developer that has published many small indie titles on Steam, which may seem simple at first, but there's a lot that goes into it. I will leave a link to his video in the description. That being said, I would love to hear what you think. Do you think that it's better to spend a year or more on a game that could be more polished and offer a lot of content? Or do you think that it's better to spend less time on a smaller game that has less to offer but can still be a great experience? Thanks for watching. We discussed a lot today. All substance and no nonsense. 
I do hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like and turn on notifications so you'll know when I upload another video. And speaking of my other videos, why not check out another one of my videos here? This has been Dirago Games.